Hello, in this video, I'll be talking about cancer, breast cancer in particular, and gene mutations. Before I go on, I want to encourage you to subscribe to our channel. This video was inspired by a viewer's comment, a viewer just like you. So if you have an idea for a video, drop a comment or a question below. I also want to invite you to go to yerba.com to get your personalized yerba report. Your Yerba report takes everything we know about you after you give us permission to access your medical records or after you upload them to us, puts everything in a report, everything we know about your cancer and treatments that you've had, tests that you've had, and then shows you the treatment options that you might hear about and some that you might not even hear about when you go to see the different doctors that you see in your breast cancer treatment course. All right, so there are two types of mutations when we talk about gene mutations in cancer. Inherited, ones that are in, our, in every cell in our body that we inherit from our parents. Some of these are also spontaneous mutations. And then a different kind of gene mutation that's present in the tumor cells. I'm going to start with the gene mutations we inherit. These we refer to as inherited susceptibility to breast cancer. Now, the most common of these and the most sort of well-known are the BRCA1 and 2 genes, sometimes called BRCA1 and BRCA2 genes. But there are in other inherited genes that are a little less famous, if you will, and these are what are called moderately penetrant. So high penetrant genes that indicates that when people have the gene, they're very likely to get breast cancer. Moderately penetrant genes are ones that pass from one parent to a child and increase the risk slightly of getting breast cancer. These moderately penetrant genes include CHEC2, BRIP1, ATM, and RAD51C and RAD51D. How people remember the alphabet soup of genes, I'm not entirely sure. So these genes increase the risk that you will get breast cancer at some point in your life. If you have genetic counseling and testing, or testing and then counseling, you can find out if you have one of these genes. And the genetic counselor will tell you the likelihood that you will get cancer over the course of your lifetime, as well as what can and should be done to decrease your risk of getting not just breast, but occasionally other cancers as well. So that's the inherited genes that are present in every gene in our body every cell in our body. The other types of genes are ones that develop in cancer cells over time. So at the time of diagnosis or later after treatment has been given and one treatment followed by another in the case of advanced breast cancer, the cells develop these gene mutations, sometimes because of the cancer treatment itself. Thinking about this, you know, there's a selective pressure put on cells when they're exposed to treatment. So somebody who undergoes treatment, those cancer cells see this treatment and they're quite um, evasive and they will develop mutations that help them evade that cancer treatment, at which point treatment needs to be changed. Many of these we test for to see if they're present in the cancer. And what that allows us to do is tailor treatment to that particular cancer. And we're getting more and more advanced in our ability to do that. One of the famous genes is ESR1. In people who have ESR1 in their cancer cell, again, this is not an inherited gene that you can pass to your child that you got from a parent, we will change treatment. And these often develop because the cancer cells have been exposed to one particular endocrine therapy. We've, we've known for years that in people who are on endocrine therapy and their cancer comes back, it's because they become resistant to a treatment. Now we know that it's because that gene mutation happens in the cancer cell. Another cancer mutation that can be seen 
are the MAP kinase mutations. And these are really seen in sort of primitive cells. And we're developing treatments to these MAP kinases, MAP kinase inhibitors. So there's a lot of work being done to help develop treatments specifically to those cancer cells. Another mutation that you may have heard of is TP53. When inherited, this is called Lee Fraumeni syndrome. And this, like the other genes I talked about at the top of the video, increase the risk of breast cancer, but also many other cancers. We have a whole separate video on Lee Fraumeni syndrome. There's also a mutation that can happen sort of sporadically or spontaneously in cancer cells. When this happens, these cells are more likely to develop into what we know as triple negative breast cancers. So there are two different types of TP53 mutations. Another mutation you may have heard about is PIK3CA. These mutations are seen in people and can be treated in people with estrogen receptor positive tumors. And in that case, if that tumor, which is seen in 40% of people with estrogen receptor positive advanced breast cancer, we can use specific drugs that are targeted to the PIK3CA mutation. And we'll put on the screen here what that type of drug is called and the specific drug that we're using. So these are used in people with advanced breast cancer whose tumors have these mutations and it's added to endocrine therapy. So just a quick note on, in addition to treatment, what causes these mutations. Sometimes we see these mutations from treatment, but they can also occur spontaneously. So in somebody who has had no treatment, we can see these mutations as well. And then there's thought that over time, inflammation and infection may also increase the risk of mutations in cancer cells. There's a lot of work being done. I want you to be really encouraged that this is really a hot area of cancer research and new drugs are coming out all the time. In fact, by the time you watch this video, there may be other treatments available. Keep the faith, stay hopeful. Thank you for watching and we'll see you next time.